as we continue our journey in geostatistics and more specifically applied geospatial statistics, we're going to uncover some work on predictive analysis where we look at factors that explain other factors. And in essence, we have something called a dependent variable, which is going to be explained by independent variables. And we use something called regression analysis, and in this case, OLS, which is just one form of regression analysis that can be performed in ArcGIS Pro in order for us to do this. So I see a map here. This is some work that Dr. McGinn and I have been doing on percent absentee rates, in this case, uh, by mail voting patterns in North Carolina. And you can see uh, we're going to do some spatial analysis uh, with some uh, with uh, some other tutorials here, but you can see some major cities, we've got the counties, we have percent absentee. Now, when I go to analysis and tools, I can type in the word OLS, or I can look at my, uh, look at my toolbo toolboxes and go to geostatistical analysis. Uh, spatial statistics. And then we have analyzing patterns, measuring geographic distributions, modeling spatial relationships. We have exploratory regression, which we've looked at uh, in other classes. But here we're just going to look at ordinary least squares analysis. And in the first example, we're going to do a really simple one here. Now it asks for input feature classes, unique feature classes, and then the dependent variable versus explanatory variables. And in class, we've talked about some of the formulas. What I care about is the interpretation of results. So our input feature class here is going to be the, the zip code data. We have a unique ID field that I've created called unique ID, which was created from the object ID. So you need to have a unique ID. I'm not necessarily sure why you need one here. It has an output feature class so we can display the results of these. And our dependent variable, and in this case, we are going to look at the percent absentee. And Dr. McGinn and I recently uh, submitted a paper to the professional geographer where that when we modeled these relationships, people said that by mail voting patterns were high in places where there were high by mail voting patterns in 2016. And so we're going to do a really, really simple OLS analysis in order to do this. And so I've got an input feature class, unique ID field, the output feature class, the dependent variable, which is going to be explained by explanatory or independent variables. In this case, we're just going to look at one of those. And then we have an output, uh, a, uh, output uh, result file. And I'm just going to call this OLS demo one factor. And it's going to save it as a PDF. So basically what we're looking to do to see, what we're looking to explore is do the 2016 absentee rates explain the 2020 absentee rates? Because our thesis and our idea was that the by mail voting rates were explained using COVID. So in areas where there was high COVID, there were high by mail rates. Now we actually found the opposite and we'll show you how we found that opposite as well. And so when I'm set, I'm going to run this. And you can see I, it looks like it had some problems with one of the, one of the data. I'll click on view details and this is what I get here. Okay, so I've just got one single factor here. I have percent absentee, I have a coefficient, and then I have this star right here. Okay, and this star here means it's significant, but this star, this factor does not have a star, so it means that percent absentee, explaining percent absentee for 2016 is not significant. And if I go down here, It'll give me a result here. It tells me the multiple R squared is about 0.027. And it has a number of other graphs and plots here that if you're a statistician, you can look at these. But this is what I care about right here. And so when we looked at this paper and we had a, a number of uh, critiques of it, someone said, well, why don't you, you know, you could get rid of the paper. You don't need the paper to see if COVID explained it. If it was high in 2016, maybe it was high 
in 2020. And we were looking at by mail election, uh, by mail voting patterns for 2016 versus 2020. So the people who voted at high rates for 2016 by mail, they also voted at high rates for 2020. And you can see here, there's no star next to this. So it means that it's not significant. It doesn't contribute significantly enough to 2020. And so when we've talked about these the, and this is, stands for probability, like our p-values, we want 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. So it, it is fairly close, but it's not close enough for us to say, dictate it with any type of significance. Now, when we open this up, and I'm going to just move this over because I'm going to run this again. You can see this area of high clustering definitely was a little bit different than the model, and we can create a, a line of best fit using that equation that we just saw, using that intercept. But if we were to open this up, we can see the unique ID, percent absentee 2020, percent absentee for 2016. This was the estimated. And we've talked about the residual. The residual is just the difference between the expected and the true value. So you can notice that this is 10.4, this is 10.03. This has a relatively small residual, so your, your standard residual here isn't going to be very high. In areas where it is high, where it expects it to be 10, it really is 17, just based on this one column, because we're going to run something called OLS, ordinary least squares, with multiple uh, multiple independent variables to see how that's going to impact something else. You can see our standard residual is going to be much, much higher. And so you can see these are going to be tagged in areas where it's it's going to be much higher than based on that one particular factor. Now, as you can imagine, uh, R squared of 0 0.029, we can basically say that our percent absentee in 2016 only explains less than 3% of our percent absentee in 2020. And as you can see, it is not significant. Now, let's look to see, find factors that are significant. Now, we're going to run this thing again. We're going to run this thing again and get rid of this. Now, what we're going to look at is... Our COVID rates, and I'm going to run this here. So instead of percent absentee, I'm going to look at my COVID rates for June of 2021. Okay, so I want to see what factor socioeconomic, maybe uh, I have some election data here, maybe they're uh, tied to um, uh, electoral um, uh, uh, party affiliation. And so we're going to look at some of those. This is going to be very, very basic. Uh, I'm not getting into, I don't want to get into issues of heteroscedacity or issues of multicollinearity because some factors are going to be related to each other. You can leave those tests for a, you know, a real statistics class. We're looking here at applied geospatial statistics where uh, we're interpreting these, uh, interpreting these results uh, through the confines of our, our GS software. And so I'm going to go to my analysis. I'm going to run OLS here. And I can type in, if I know OLS, I can just type in OLS right here. And then this is ordinary least square. So I've got the same exact thing again. I'm going to be looking at the zip codes. I've got a unique ID field. This time, I'm going to look for the factors that explain COVID for June 2021. I'm just going to explain them with a, a few factors. You know, this is just an example. Population density. Population, that would make sense. People who are closer together might have uh, transmit COVID. But I'm going to look at median household income, poverty rates, um, percent minority. We have a race calcul calculation here. Um, average number of vehicles, so pe people's ability to get, uh, you know, get to uh, uh, health care, uh, median age, and then the Registered Democrats, Republicans, and unaffiliated. Unaffiliated makes up a lot of people here. And let me see if there's anything else I want to look at. So I've got about six or eight different factors here that we're going to look at. I'm going to run my report file. And I'm just going to run this in um, demo. And I'm going to call it multiple factors. 
Okay. And I'm not going to put in the previous COVID rates because I would imagine that'll mess up that model. Now, when we talked about multiple, uh, we talked about single regression or a sing, uh, um, one versus one, we can model this in a line. But as we explain this with multiple factors, with two factors, trying to explain one, we can create a plane. But with three and four and five and six, we kind of get multi uh um, multi-dimensional, which is difficult to visualize. So we're just going to run this and we're going to interpret the results. So I'm going to run this. Gives me any errors or warnings or anything like that, because a lot of times for some of these COVID rates, we might not have data available. And you can see that it does have that. And this is some of the challenges in, in working with real world data. We we'll click on view the details and this is what it has here. Okay, now let's see what it has. Okay, so I've got a coefficient, so I can coefficient standard error. error. So we've got population density wasn't really important. Median household income, not necessarily important, but poverty rate, race, vehicles, registered amount of uh, percentage of Republicans, and median age. Now, when we look at these coefficients, we see negatives here in this case. So negative means as the median age goes up, the COVID rate actually goes down. Okay, so as the median age, so it's basically a negative correlation. So you can think of kind of a line that goes from your upper left to, to your bottom right as opposed to your bottom left to your upper right. And so as COVID rates, as median age increases, your COVID rates go down. That kind of makes sense. So your young people have it. You can see your registered uh, Republicans. So Republican uh, dominated areas have higher rates of COVID. And this is with statistical significance because you can see these are close, but not necessarily. But you can see unaffiliated actually had a, a negative correlation, which I thought was kind of interesting. We can see average number of vehicles. Race was a factor, okay, and then also median household income wasn't, but minority also was. And so now we can see these factors that are significant to this particular model. Now, on this particular model, we've got a multiple R squared of 0.18. So there's a lot of other quantifiable factors out there that are going to contribute to that other 0.82 you know, 82% within this factor, as well as qualitative factors that we can't we can't highlight within a um, within a GIS or, or model in any way, shape, and form. So, really quickly, we can we can look at the the communities and the areas that were affected most by COVID. We've got young right here. We've got poverty right here. Um, average number of vehicle, vehicles goes down. So people with less access to vehicles had higher COVID rates. Maybe there is a relationship. Okay. And we can perform some longitudinal analysis or more detailed analysis to figure out, you know, the why behind some of these things. But these kind of just pinpoint some of the factors related to, uh, related to this as well. Now, as I get out of this here, this is the model. Okay, so this is the model. And in a perfect model, most of these are going to be yellow, essentially because we want a, a good model fit here. But as I open up the attribute table, you can see the COVID rates, and then you can see what the estimated COVID rate was versus the residual. So just using the explanatory factors that we have right here, which are population density, income, poverty rate, percent minority, average number of vehicles, and our uh, political affiliations, there's tons and tons of other factors out there that can explain those. This is what we estimated based on our particular model and the contribution of each of these factors and whatever units they are to get a approximate COVID rate based on those particular values. And this residual stands for the difference between what is really the COVID value and what is the value based on this particular model. And so in closing here, I wanted to highlight how we interpret these. I don't want to talk too much about the actual numbers that go into this model, but the important thing is that I want to make sure we understand how we interpret these results as part of regression 
OLS analysis for one factor, one independent factor explaining a dependent factor, as well as multiple dependent fact independent factors explaining a single dependent factor.